Hello, welcome into the Keras Pen Code channel. I'm Paul, and today we're going to talk about the Ink V2 fountain pen uh, and everything that kind of goes with that. If you're unfamiliar with Keras Pen Co., I, I highly recommend that you take a look at some of our other videos or head over to our website where we have a lot of other information that you can th read through po past posts, a blog. Um, an about section and all that. Today we're talking about the Ink V2 fountain pen, which is our flagship fountain pen. Um, this was originally designed and manufactured via a Kickstarter campaign um, that we launched around 2013, 2014. It was, was very successful for us and basically was the for our first step into fountain pens as a whole. And in this video, we're going to kind of walk through the different things about it, uh, all the different components, some of the minor changes, but basically we're going to stick with the current version of the ink uh, fountain pen, which is the V2 version. We've gone through multiple different iterations to where we are today, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's quickly jump over to a top-down view of the ink V2 fountain pen. So the ink... V2 fountain pen is a cartridge converter fountain pen, uh, which means that it can use either a piston converter um, or a cartridge, which is a... The difference between the two is the cartridge is at the top of the screen, those two little black um, cartridges, for lack of a better word, that's what they are. They're full of black ink. They're self-contained. When you put them in and insert them, it breaks a seal, allowing the ink to go into the feed of the, of the fountain pen nib, and then you can write that way until the cartridge is expended of ink or runs dry if you happen to leave it for a long period of time. Whereas the, um, the converter, piston converter, allows you to use it multiple times over by putting the, the piston down submerging either the nib or the piston tip itself into a bottle of ink, uh, pulling, retracting back the piston and, and filling the, the, the reservoir full of ink, which then fits on the back of the nib, similar to the cartridge, and then you can use it that way. So you kind of have all the different main components here. Um, I've selected the black ink V2 with a black grip and kind of all the different options, or at least and all the different major options here and how you can kind of customize the Ink V2. Um, the Ink V2 is a very customizable pen. We do quite a bit of, uh, we, we allow you to customize quite a bit where you can select the body, the cap and the body um, are always together in terms of the colors for materials. And, but you can pick uh, a variety of different grip section options, including raw tumbled aluminum, silver, raw brass, raw copper, or the black anodized aluminum. These parts are not plastic. If you're unfamiliar with this pen, this pen is currently only available in three different metals, that being aluminum, brass, and copper. We offer the tumbled aluminum is the only raw version of the aluminum. And then we offer raw copper and raw brass, as well as a variety of different anodized aluminum colors. Nibs are Bach nibs from Germany. Um, these are a number six size, which means the width of the feed is six millimeters. Um, if you're curious about that, many people are. This is a number six, which is considered a full size nib for a fountain pen. We have a variety of different options in terms of nib sizes. In polished steel, we have everything from extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, and a 1.1 calligraphy stub. And then we also have titanium nibs in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad, and then gold, 14 karat gold nibs in fine and broad. These are our Basically, we receive them and we mark them with our own special logo. They have the size marked on them as well. If you're familiar with Bach nibs, you know that the standard Bach nibs do not come with sizing on the nib itself. However, we get the blank nibs and we mark them ourselves and put and include the size on there. 
Uh, the, the pen comes standard, any of the pens come standard with a polished steel nib of your choice. The, uh, the titanium nib is an upgrade um, of, I believe, 50 to $55. The, the 14 karat gold nib is also an upgrade of, I believe, $120. Um, so there you kind of have the basics of the pen itself. Um, we manufacture in-house the body and the cap as well as the grip. We also um, have the, the, the clips themselves are a two process where it's our design. We have them water jet out of stainless steel and then the sheet of stainless steel is brought back here. We then machine them out like the last bit out of so that each one is out of the the sheet of stainless steel, and then we heavy tumble them to get a nice soft look to those clips. Uh, once again, like I said, the the nibs are manufactured in Germany by Bach. Uh, we source our converters from another German company, Schmidt. They are K5 converters, which we feel are the the best quality in terms of standard international converters. And then our, the, the, the ink cartridges that we use, we source those from Monteverdi. Those are the, just the standard black, which are manufactured in Austria. So quickly, I'm gonna walk through some of the past options uh, in a slideshow presentation, which we will start now. And as you can see, we're just going to look at some of the past color options and some of the current color options. Um, just a variety of different pictures as we kind of talk through the pen itself. Um, as I said, the, the Ink B2 fountain pen has gone through numerous iterations. The original Kickstarter version was a much smaller nib, was a no number five nib that we sourced from Schmidt. We only had three different versions of that nib available in terms of sizing options. This currently what you're seeing on your screen is the uh, copper body with multiple different grip section options. One of our premium options in terms of pricing and the way that it looks, it is considerably heavier than the standard version of the uh, aluminum if you look in the description, you can see some of the weights listed there. Uh, but we were unhappy with the Schmidt sizing. We got a lot of feedback. And so in 2016, we transferred over to uh, the Bach number six nibs, and we've been quite happy with them since then. We've gone through multiple different iterations uh, of nibs in terms of what nibs we offered. We used to offer two-tone nibs, and we've offered um, a bunch of different sizing. And we, in the beginning, we just offered the standard color, uh, the standard Bach nibs. But as we beca became, as these became more and more uh, popular with our customers, we went ahead and switched to blank nibs. And the current situation that we're in now, um, this is one of our anniversary edition Ink V2s that we released in 2019, which was a matte gray with a black clip. And so we've come to where we are today and offering this in multiple different versions, uh, and we're quite happy with the product. So you can see it's kind of an industrial minimalist design in terms of the in terms of the how the clip attaches, which is just the, the two screws on the on the side, and the clip itself is very durable, very. Industrial is what comes to mind. Many people say that the look isn't industrial, but the minimalist. Um, if you're curious, the the cap does not post on the body of the pin, which means the cap will not fit on the back end of the pin. Um, a couple different reasons for that. One, the threads of the cap are rather sharp and they will mar the body of the pin. Plus, we feel that the weight of the pin itself is enough even in the aluminum the lighter aluminum versions that you don't really need the extra weight of the cap it can overpower the back end uh, when we did allow posting or we did basically the early versions did allow for posting it was just kind of unwieldy in the hand this is a special chemical 
um, process, etch an etching process that creates this. This is a Knox version. We had a local artist create this pen for us. He's done m many of these. It's an addition. It's, a, it's an electrochemical process that basically etches and coats the surface of the solid copper pens. Here's our dark green, which is um, maybe out of stock currently, and we may not be able to get it in the future. If we do have some, these are going to be the last the last few that we get of these dark green colors in quite some time. Um, the solid brass version is just a beautiful option if you really like the brass color. Um, just pops. Uh, it's not nearly, it's also a premium, but it's not nearly as expensive as the solid copper. Uh, very durable, again, brass is quite durable. Um, and though while it will show some scratches, it is uh, a very robust pen. And so it comes to where we are today, where we've done some major, some minor um, engineering changes, specifically in the cap. Uh, we've added an O-ring to the inside of the cap, which keeps the cap on when you pocket carry the pen and allows you to basically ensure that there's an airtight seal in the cap. This version that you're seeing here is the is a new grip section offering that we have, which has a frag, a like a kind of frag grip section profile, allows for a little bit better tactical grip and fill with a blue body and blue cap. Um, and with the with that O-ring technology, we also did some minor changes to the grip section where we moved the nib a little bit forward. We used to have a very recessed nib in the grip section, uh, but we have since basically moved away from that, and we have this much more uniform look where it's where the the grip section and the nib look better together in terms of how they fit the. The older version, the, the nib was sunk much further back. This is a special release we did for our Keras Creepers, a cryptozoology-themed uh, releases that we did. This is the Chupacabra, where we had gray, a matte gray body and cap with a matte red frag grip section. This one, unfortunately, is out of stock, but was one we released last year. And once again, the brass version of the pen, you can see it's... Quite, it's one of our most popular options in all of our pens is the brass, but definitely in the ink itself. A favorite as well is going to be the orange. Uh, whenever we can have orange in stock in terms of orange anodized, we try to keep as much of it around as possible, and it is definitely one of our more popular colors. The tumbled aluminum is just a raw aluminum pen that we've heavy tumbled. It gives it a really nice uh, feel to it. It's also... If you're, if you're an EDC person, you're going to use the pen out in the, you know, the out on, on a job site or something like that, and you don't want to worry about dropping it and scratching it or marring it in any way, this is the best option available because you tumble it, so it gives the surface this variegated look and so it hides any possible dings that you may have. We also offer some battle-worn options where we basically anodize the pen and then we put them through a tumbling process post Post that process. It's um, kind of we used to do stone washed. It was called stone washed. Now we call it battle worn because we we've increased the amount of time that it's in the tumbler and it looks much more um, beaten up. It's it's one of our again another option when we have it in stock. It's very pop, very very popular though we don't have it in stock all the time. We've also just recently started adding. Cerakote options. This is an eggshell blue, a robin's egg blue Cerakote that was applied to our to the ink with a with a silver grip, silver anodized grip section. Very very beautiful. It is a little bit more expensive because the Cerakote costs quite a bit more than the uh, anodized does, but it looks much different. It feels much different in the hand. Um, it's a very nice option if you're in, if you're down for something like that. <clears throat> And then uh, just wrapping up, uh, another super popular color, our violet anodize is just a great color, really nice. It's hard to get a good violet, a good 
a good purple like this. Many times they they lean a little bit dark or they, they seem a little bit opaque. This one is very nice and transparent, allows for that shine from the aluminum to come through. Uh, so it's just one of those really beautiful colors. We do have a large selection of these in stock almost all the time. And so as we look through these last few, again, this is a white a Cerakote on this one. Just a beautiful, beautiful color. The white Cerakote is the only way that we can currently get white on the pens. Um, and while this one is sold out currently, we, we will return to this in the future. But most of our colors and our different anodized options are come standard. We have a variety of different uh, anodized colors. I believe there is currently eight different anodized colors, along with some raw versions. Uh, and we do have special editions that come in stock and out of stock throughout the year. We just kind of try to rotate through all the different color options that we can have, um, what's available to us. Sometimes we're able to source things differently. And so there you kind of have what we're looking at right now. Um, come back quickly to the breakdown. We'll just wrap up. But again, the Ink V2 fountain pen was, as I said, our first foray into fountain pens. Um, and still, to, to this day, are probably our most popular fountain pen. Many different resellers have uh, sold or currently do sell the Ink as part of their standard, the standard uh, options that they sell. So there is this nice, um, th th this, this, there is a lot of people that seek it out um, specifically because it's rather unique on the marketplace. You're not going to find a lot of pens that look this way or this durable necessarily in terms of a fountain pen. Um, and again, we have a lifetime warranty on all the parts that we manufacture for any kind of damage that we incur uh, or that you potentially, if you get a pen and it doesn't work properly, or even after, over time, if there's noticeable wear and tear on the threads, we've had some threads that for whatever reason, they wore over the time, over time and we basically had to replace the pens. Um, any parts that we manufacture, lifetime warranty on, on our manufacturing end of it. Um, we do offer a service program where you can send your pins into us and we'll service them if there's anything wrong with them that you've done to them and we can fix it we will if it's just cosmetics a lot of times we can't repair the, the cosmetic dings and dents that will incur over time especially if you're really rough on your pen uh, but if we can fix it if it's some damage like the clip screws come undone because you were took it out and then you threaded it in a little bit too hard and stripped something or um, you potentially banged up the nib or misaligned the tines, you know, we can attempt to, to fix those things. And usually we offer that service free of charge. Though there may be a little bit of cost if it does take us a lot of time and it's something that, some damage that you did, um, you did to the pen, we may actually charge you for it, but it's relative, it's usually relatively inexpensive. Most of the time we try to do it for as little or no charge as possible. So there you have it. Uh, you know, that's going to wrap up our Ink V2 fountain pen kind of overview. If you have any questions or comments, please place those below, um, and I will get to them as time allows. Uh, my name, once again, is Paul. Uh, I am in charge of social media and inventory and a bunch of other different things, or not in social media, in charge of the social media channel in terms of the YouTube account, but I'm also in charge of marketing inventory and product placement, product uh, sourcing, and a whole bunch of different things here, if you don't know who I am. Um, and I, I highly encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel. Um, check out some of the other videos that we have offered. We're going to be starting uh, live videos as well, so there's a bunch of that coming up. Uh, thank you once again for spending a little time looking over the Ink V2 fountain pen. And uh, I will talk to you again soon. Goodbye.